It's Saturday morning, and Kevin and I, you notice I'm not driving. We're not going to Lexington. We're not headed to Lexington, yeah. yeah. We are doing something we've never done before. So, like, we were this many years old until we did this thing. We are going to an auction. We've never been to an auction before. Uh, my sister came over last night, and um, we, she stayed for like, I don't know, four or five hours. Um, she came over and um, we sat on the front porch and we drank coffee and then we went for a long walk and we looked at Halloween decorations around town. And if you follow me on Instagram, I posted a, a little uh, video. Of course, those go away in like 24 hours or something. But I did post some pictures of houses we saw um, that weren't in that video. But she told me about um, her her husband, John, you all have met John in the videos, um, told her that the Clark County school system is having an auction today. Well, um, they're, they're getting rid of a lot of surplus furniture. So we're going to go basically to that auction. It's at the, um, the bus... Depot? The bus depot. The school bus depot. Bus garage. Bus right. garage. Yeah, the bus garage. Um, we are going to see if they have any surplus desks. If you have not priced desks at stores, they're expensive. Like, if you look at, like, Office Depot, Office Max, whatever, desks are expensive. So, we might not buy anything. We might not see anything that we like. I mean, they're surplus for a reason, right? So, that means probably that they're something wrong with them. I don't know. We've never done this before. So this is uh, this is where they park all the buses, and so we've just parked here, and uh, like I said, we've never been to one of these, so we're gonna see if we can look around, if we're able to look around before uh, we even get a number to see if there's um, any reason for us to even stay, because they might not have anything we want. I forgot we've been looking at some stuff, and I forgot that okay, I I, I should be filming some of this. Um, they have tons and tons of chairs. They have more. Look at the cafeteria tables. Oh my gosh. Look at all these. Uh, uh, what are the file cabinets? Lots of chairs, lots of file cabinets. There's globes. Yeah. And it's been raining, so it's, it's really, really wet and ugly. But see, these aren't even better than what we have. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, we would see. We would have to have two of those, and we couldn't fit two of those in our room. I'm just saying, though, it's still basically a big conference table. Right. Right. And then these are little desks that go in a classroom. Student desks. I know, it's amazing. Here's some, ooh, Kevin. Okay, no. These are tables like they use in the preschool. What about these? They don't work enough for me. No. If you wanted them, you could get them, but my computer's not around, so that would be just. It not work for me. And that one's nice, but. <laughs> No, and it's too big. Look at 
Look at this chair right here. I wonder where they use this. That's hilarious. Look at all these. Uh, these are Montessori cabinets. Like they would have had these in the preschool. And you see how they have them marked with what goes in the cabinet. That's exactly the kind of stuff that they use. And they have the little kitchen sets. There's all kinds of little kitchen sets and stuff like that um, here. It's a shame they had them I know. I don't know why they put them in the rain. So there's tables here. There's also like school buses. Yeah, I don't know if they're selling them or just going to park. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, all these desks. And there's dishes down here. Did you notice that? Oh, in those, yeah. 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 I wonder if you're probably not allowed to open them. So this is like a big mixer or something like that, and That's they've got. Like have a crumble. Oh, to mix up yeah, the, frosting. the frosting, and then they have all this. Uh, yeah. Stuff. So they also have all this stuff that would be in a cafeteria. Yeah, serving. Thing. Yeah, isn't that neat? So like that that I mean, if you had a big kitchen, you could use something like that. And that would be perfect. Yeah. These are these are really neat. So I I've just told you we you saw what they had and um they it made a mistake, honestly, because they had a lot of like pressed wood stuff. They have particle board and stuff. Particle board stuff. And they left it outside and it rained. Yeah, that stuff gets water in it and it goes. Yes. <laughs> to be very honest though, there was nothing that we wanted anyway. No, I mean, if we were trying to outfit a private school classroom or something uh, yes. with, with some student desks, that would have been nice, I guess. Yes. The, the metal desks though, some of them are in good shape. Some of them are awful. Uh, I mean, like they had spray painted them and, and oh, I didn't had even stuff that. stuck over them. Oh, and, I never saw that. Yeah, they were scratched all the time. I just stuff. saw where like a regular teacher's desk, you have like the file cabinet on the side. Yeah. Some of them were broken. Jammed up. Some yeah. of them were missing completely, yeah, missing those uh, missing those drawers completely. And um, so, you know, you want something that's, or I do anyway, that's going to look decent. Yeah. I don't want something that's going to to look bad and I didn't expect everything to be perfect at an auction I didn't but I was at least operational <laughs> well I was hoping to get even if we got two I was hoping to get two desks to replace that one big long table that yeah. we have but uh, what they had was like the, the length of a table of a table and a half so it wouldn't have fit right like, a ten, like, like an eight foot long table yeah, it just wouldn't have fit right for the space that we wanted. And uh, so we we finished looking around before Jennifer and John even got there. And as we were pulling out, we saw them pulling in. And, and as a matter of fact, she asked me, do I do you think it's worth me going? I said, you should go and look around. I said, it's, it's going to take you 10 minutes um, to look around. And, it, you know, it's... You can make up your mind pretty fast. Yes. Yeah, and there was just nothing there for us. No. Um, and the teacher's desk, you know, that sounds really good. If I were to just do a desk, I wanted to sit out and do like paperwork, write, write my bills out and stuff like that. It would be fine to have one of those little keyholes, just a little small desk. I've got two big computer cases that have to go somewhere. So they're either going to sit on, because they've got the filing cabinets on each side. You can't put them on each side of the, the keyhole. So you're basically either going to stick it on the side, the outside of the desk, which is going to look weird, or you're going to have to put them on the desk, which takes up a lot of desk space. So, so for me, those kind of desks just don't work. Um, I need something with just legs, <laughs> like spindly little legs, you know? Yeah, it does. Uh, they have had auctions over in Lexington, yeah. uh, surplus stuff. I wonder if your school ever does that. Uh, we, they used to do that. They uh, Then they started just putting it on eBay. Because I tell you what, because there's an eBay for for schools or something like that. Oh, yeah. if they if they ever they don't had, advertise it though. oh, they don't advertise it. You wouldn't want the junk at our school. Well, they literally are are falling apart by the time it gets down there. 
Uh, well, that stuff was practically. Yeah, true. <coughs> um, no, in your classroom, your old classroom, I always loved the cabinets you had. Oh, those big. Uh, the wooden, wooden cabinets. cabinets. I always loved them, and they well, had. I you know a, they got rid of those when they remodeled. I know. I'm, I'm sure somebody bought them. Uh huh. Those would have been nice to have. Yeah, they were big too. They were big. They were. They had like glass um, at the top part of them. They had a, a glass. Oh, you're talking about the actual hutch. Yeah. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the cabinets against the wall. No, I'm talking about the hutches, the hutches that were you yeah. kept your books. That thing weighed. I mean, literally oh, I know. 400 pounds. Oh, I'm, I'm <laughs> it was sure. Solid wood. Yeah. It was probably been around since the 60s. <laughs> yeah. No. Literally. Those cabinets that you had in the back. Yes, those cabinets were nice. Too. Those would be good for a garage or something. Yes. Because they, they were uh, really sturdy. Yeah. They Everything in there were solid perfect. wood. But when they remodeled for the nursing programs, they they took all that stuff out. Yeah, Kevin. Um, if you go back years ago on the vlogs, I actually filmed in Kevin's classroom. Kevin's room, yeah, yeah, you, you got to see it. And um, I mean, I can picture it perfectly in my mind right now uh, because we were in there so often. Um, but I filmed in there. And then what they did was they- um, They built a new campus in another, count, in another town over. Basically. Right, and so his room uh, where he was, they put nursing students in there and so the they whole building got converted to health yeah so they redid everything in there um it still looks the same when you walk in the door uh -huh. but then once you go in the classroom it's all different yeah it's i all, think that's they neat. took down walls and everything and made them different sizes and added walls and everything i mean because i had a really long room yes um and they cut i think they divided it in half they split oh, that I'm room sure and they made did. two rooms out of it and added a door yeah, uh, Kevin had a nice room. It, it really, room. it really was nice. They kept some of them like that for uh, the big industrial rooms we had down in the, uh, the lower bay area. Mm -hmm. The the great big high bay, the really high ceilings. They made one of them into like an auditorium lecture room. It's really nice. Oh wow! And then uh, uh, the other ones they use for simulation labs. Like they've got a they've got half of a, a paramedics truck in there. And they simulate like a like you're an actual what you would do in a, with a paramedic, you know, as a paramedic. Right. Um, it's pretty cool. Kevin, if you don't know, if you're tuning in for the first time, uh, Kevin uh, is a uh, well. What would you say your title is now? I'm an assistant dean, but also a professor. Right. So, um, at a, a local college, and so we're talking about college students here. Yeah. And, and so yeah, I couldn't handle anything younger than college. Students. So, at, at Kevin's school, the highest you can get is what an associate's degree. Associate degree. Yeah, an associate's degree. So, like you, I think it's really, really smart if you have a child and you want to save some money. Why have them go to a, a college for four years? They can go to a, a college like Kevin's. Um, it's a it's a college. It's a community college. Right. It's a, yeah. It's a community college. You can go there for to, up until you get your associate's degree. And then transfer. In. And transfer to your university. It's a lot cheaper. It, yes, it's so much cheaper. I don't know why people don't do that. Um, so I think some people like the college environment they want that scene you know they want the uh, they live the on campus and, and they, that right they, 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 or they need that they need to live on the dorm because they're coming from far away right um, if you need that then yeah go to a college because we don't have dorms we no. used to have dorms we don't need dorms. you used to have dorms we used to share dorms with the uk oh yeah. okay when you were on uh, lcc yeah when when we were on cooper campus um, they they had a subset of students that had stayed in dorms Right. But that doesn't, that doesn't happen anymore. I don't even know if they still use the dorms. I bet they don't. I don't think so either. But if you if you have a kid who uh, if they're gonna if they're gonna live at home, uh, if they're gonna live at home with you and they're gonna commute or whatever, or they already live on their own. Yeah. Then it would. Yeah. If you. Yeah. It would be crazy not to save some money and go to a school like his and get your associate's degree and then transfer over. Um, because it, it's so much cheaper. Yeah, smaller classes too. Ashley, at least ours is. Ashley went to like four different she schools. She did. She went to our school too. She did. She she went to Ash. Our daughter Ashley went to like four different schools. Um, she ended up uh, getting her uh, master's 
from, uh, she got it from. Was it Murray? Murray State. Yeah. Yeah, but she went to, she went to like four different colleges because she was just honestly trying to find the best fit for her. But she did get her associate's degree from your school. Yeah. And uh, so it, it saved her some money. So I, I think it's just smart to do that. But they have, uh, like Kevin said, they have the nursing program. They have, um, they have, um, the, where you're going to be at what an EMT? Yeah. They, they don't do police though, do they? Yeah, we have a they do. Academy. They do the police. Yeah, academy? but you have to be accepted into the police academy by the police department. I think. Uh -huh. I think. I don't know. Um, now they have a criminal justice program where you don't have to be accepted into the Lexington Police Department. Uh -huh. Like we have two different things. They're kind of like parallel with each other. You can just get criminal justice uh -huh. and take some of the same classes. And maybe that would improve your chance of getting hired, or you can be hired by the police department and then go to the police academy, which you'd have to go to anyway. Um, and you take classes and all that stuff there too. So we have a police academy on our campus. It used to be somewhere else. Now it's actually well, on e our campus. EKU was where my dad always went. Yeah, but that's still that's still a place you would go for a bachelor's degree or something. Okay. But this is talking about a Lexington police academy. Oh, it's just for Lexington. Police. It's for Lexington police specifically. I think so. I don't think anybody else goes. So there. you don't think. The Winchester I could be wrong. place goes there. I don't, I don't really know. I don't know much about that. I don't advise into that program, so I don't really know. Right. Oh, we do everything. Automotive, welding. Yeah, they've had the automotive. Tools. So, do they not have an automotive department on uh, Leestown anymore? Yeah. So, oh, they still do have yeah. that. We do. We're the only um, school in the state that does equine, too. So, you can learn how to be a horse, uh, work with uh, racing horses and stuff. Yeah, I bet not every school yeah. can say that they have that. No, we're, we're like I said, we're the only one in the, I think we're the only one in the state. Unless somebody else added one, I think we were the only one. I wonder if there's anything major that people take in college that you don't do. Like a field that you are like, no, we, we definitely don't We don't go don't as that. deep into any of it than a four-year college. Right, you know? because they're only getting their associate's right. degree. But we offer every topic. Everything. Yeah. So if you... Philosophy and history and... So like Ashley, I don't think, I, Ashley's a teacher, our daughter, she's a teacher. Yeah. I don't know that she actually got any of the teaching she stuff. Did. She did, she got some education did? classes. Okay, because I was thinking if you just went and got your, your basic math and English and stuff like that, you could get your basics there. Yeah, and then it's associate on. science or associate art. But she, you're saying she did get stuff that She would. got one of those, but she also took a couple of education classes as an elective, so I'm pretty sure she did. Right. But we have an elect we have a program that does education. You can just you, it's a transfer program though. It's really um, it's really not meant for you to come out and get a job in education when you're done because you have to have a bachelor's degree. What lane's he getting in? I know, whatever lane he different one. Whatever lane he's getting in, I'm getting in the other lane. There there's uh there is a truck in front of me and he was going really, really slow. It looks like it's been beat with a baseball bat. Yeah. I told Kevin, I said I have the most random subject to talk about for just a minute, um, and I have not told him what it is, but <laughs> here we go. Toilet paper. Okay, when I've noticed this about myself, when you go, I'm going to ask you, when you go into a stall in a store, so it doesn't matter where it's at. Um, they basically have like the same toilet paper dispensers. Would you rather use the toilet paper out of the dispenser or if someone has laid an roll extra on roll on top, would you rather use that? Probably out of the dispenser. Okay. I'm the opposite. I'm using the one on top because... Well, you can't at least see it. Because it's easier. It is easier. It's easier. The dispenser's a pain in the butt. You have to reach up in there and grab it. It's horrible. It's horrible. And I mean, honestly, I have used the one on the top most of the time. If oh. I go, I try not to go in the stalls at all if I can help it. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I've always used the one on top, too, now that you think about it, now that you mentioned it. Yeah. Well, the same with the paper towel roll. Yes. They'll have the dispenser, and yes. they'll have sometimes they'll have a half a roll sitting on yes. top where they've changed it. Uh -huh. I'll usually almost always use the roll. And I'm thinking... I'm the cheapo person to where if they just had like 
just had the roll sitting there all the time. I mean, that's what I would use all the time. I would prefer that because so many times, and, and I hate those toilet paper dispensers where you put your hand up there and you'll pull out one, well, one square. square at a time and it gets on my nerves so bad. It's like a napkin dispenser. Is that the kind you're talking about? Or has it got a roll? It, it has just, a roll. It just, doesn't it just it won't out. tear off. Yeah. It's like, what kind of cheap toilet paper? Which, let me tell you, I don't care what anybody says. I think that Scott toilet paper is the worst toilet paper you can buy. And the people that I <laughs> and know. And you can buy single ply. Only rich people <laughs> that I know, only rich people buy Scott toilet paper. And it's, awful toilet paper. And it's the worst John Wayne toilet paper. It's horrible. Can't stand it. Um, but no, we, um, we were in... Uh, um, Whole Foods today and so in Whole Foods I, I, I had to go to the bathroom and so I went in there and they had it the regular and then they had a, a roll laying on top and I thought my day's made because this is so much easier just to use the the one on top and um, what's funny is in Meyer they have one of the great big dispensers on it's hooked to the side of the, um, the stall and the front the whole front of this dispenser has been like broken forever so like it's missing the whole front of it and you like you can see, see the, the, the roll or two it's perfect i wish they would just leave it like so that you can just grab it and pull it yes i wish they would leave it like that because once they fix it it's going to cover it up and you're going to have to reach your hand up in there again and start using that whereas right now i can see it and it's wonderful and it's so easy have to you, use have you used the toilet paper dispensers that have the little squares of toilet paper like little napkins and you pull them out one at a time like like uh no where's that at? I, i've seen them once in some place i don't remember where it was at they were know. like stacks you know like you would get a dispenser for yeah. a napkin yeah they were like that except they were they were like you pull it out and you fold it over and it was like a piece of oh paper. that would cost them so and much they, more it was me. i think it was a swanky place anyway. oh i was gonna i was thinking because i don't do my toilet paper like you do anyway um, I have said before during videos, Ashley and I are waters. We will wad, we will pull the toilet paper off, but then we'll wad it up and use it. Kevin is a folder. Kevin very meticulously, show him with your hands how you do it. You fold it in half, you fold it in half, you fold it in half. Uh-huh, that is Kevin. So, uh, I, I, if you did that as a would your other question, I, I wonder if it'd be like a half and half kind of thing. Or would people even like, what the heck are you talking about? Oh no, there's water? definitely a style. I think there's a toilet a style. paper water or a folder. You're yes. one or the other. And I would say just like over the top uh, in the back toilet yes. paper roll. Everybody's got a style. Yes. And if you're from the back, you're wrong. If you put it over the back, it's just wrong. Yeah, you need to go over the top. That's yeah. the correct way to do the toilet paper well, roll. Is the reason the I say that, even even though I think over the top is a good way. Um, if you put it in the back, you've got to reach it all the way against the wall. And it's dragging the it. wall. Yeah. It's dragging the wall, and it doesn't make sense. So Why would like you want to do that? <laughs> so, I told you, that was a very random conversation. but And I still can't stand the, um, the as far as drying your hands, I do not like the air dryers. No. I don't like any other ones. I None don't of them work really well. I don't feel clean. Even the, the Dyson ones that are put your hand at in the and movie pull theater. them out. Yeah, yeah, at the movie theater, yeah. they've Whole got Food some. Had them too. Because I feel like I'm gonna, my rings are gonna fall off. Yeah, because I just don't like them because they really still don't dry your hands. I just don't feel clean. And then you got a big puddle of water sitting at the bottom of them. So I mean, it's, they're not very good. No. Um, same thing with blowing your nose. If you blow your nose, do you wad or do you fold? Now, I'm different when it comes to blowing my nose because I use Kleenex, and I'll get two Kleenex. It's always two. Uh, I get two Kleenex, and I do lay one on top of the other. Flat. I don't fold them, but it's it's flat. it's flat, but I do not fold it. So, once you blow your nose, that's it one time, and that's it? Throw in the garbage? Yes, and I'm, I'm not a folder. I I'm, double fold. Oh, my gosh. You're you so your cheap. Nose. You blow your nose, and then you then you fold that, take that fold, no. and blow it again. No, at hey, least it's better than a cloth I, handkerchief my dad used to use. That is the most. And uh, there was vile. a guy at work. I think I've said this before on, on a video, but this guy at work had one, and he would always pull out his little cloth hanky from his from his pocket, and he would blow his nose, 
and, but when he next time he wanted to get out he would pull it out and have to pull it open to see which one didn't have it sealed up with mucus. oh my gosh that's that, i hope nobody's eating while they're watching this yeah. video because that is Gross. absolutely disgusting i think if i were friends with him I, i'd have to say something I would yeah, have to say, yeah, that's you know, that's disgusting. And who's cleaning that? Is your wife cleaning that? Because that's really gross. I remember dad used them and he would throw them in the dirty clothes. That's just gross. There's just, no, there are limits. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be the type of carry around a lot of toilet paper in my, a lot of Kleenex in my pocket all the time. No, that there are limits. And you know, that, I think that is an older lady thing to carry Kleenex around in your pocket. But like for me, once I've used it, I'm throwing that away. I'm not gonna tuck that in for later. And I have seen women, I've seen women do the same thing with Kleenex that you're talking about with a napkin, with a cloth napkin. Yeah. It They'll tuck it in their pocket and then pull it out. And it's like, no, no, I'm not doing that. I want a clean, Kleenex. Thank you. So you're going to hear the washing machine behind me, which is completely fine. Just ignore it. Um, a couple of months ago, we bought this uh, Butrel. Is that how you would say that? Butrel handheld garment steamer. And it looks like this. And I showed uh, Kevin using it on my blouses from Ann Taylor. And it, did, it does a really nice job. So this is one of the blouses. And I'm going to set the camera up. And I'm going to... Um, film Kevin. Um, I have bought three new blouses and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Uh, this is the before and then the after because uh, these these came straight off the rack at Ann Taylor. They have almost completely stopped steaming the clothes in our location. They, were all like this. they looked or awful. Ours. Yes, they look absolutely horrible, and I've never seen them look so bad in the store. But anyway, I'm going to show you uh, Kevin steaming the clothes, and you'll be able to see what a good job it does. I don't follow the Facebook page, but I check in on the Facebook page every now and then. And it is a photography studio in Winchester. That's where we live, Winchester. And uh, so I check in every now and then on this photography studio because somebody hires them to go to events and take pictures. And I have no idea who, who's Probably the doing. city. And that's what I'm wondering. Is it like the city? Because like when they or have... The newspaper, one of the when they have like... Uh, well, I don't know how the newspaper could afford it though. I mean, because... I mean, how many people get the newspaper still? 20 or something? You know, I mean, really. How many people get the, the, win the uh, newspaper? But... Um, with the newspaper business is just... It's amazing. I would have never thought when Kevin and I first got married, because we used to get the newspaper for years, and I loved getting the newspaper and looking through it, and then at one point, it, it got to the point where there was like, it's, it's like there's, a, in it. yeah, there was not enough in it. It's it was like, like five pages long, that was it. Yes, and so it's like, why am I paying to get this little skinny paper when there's nothing in it? It wasn't like, um, the Lexington Herald on Sunday where you were getting all these coupons and ads and stuff like that. It was for our local paper. There just wasn't enough news in there. And at that time, it seems like they had just started putting everything online so you could see it for free online or look at the paper. It seems that way. And then they realized, hey, we need to, for free. yeah, we need to put this behind a paywall and so you can look at like maybe five articles a month online for free, unless you can look at them completely free. If you are, um, if you have a library card. Yeah, just go through the library. A lot of people don't know that. If you have a public library card. Um, at least our library. 
our local public library, you can type in the number and you can look at all kinds of publications for absolutely free. Yeah. Um, so, uh, why, why was I even talking about this? The Facebook group. Oh, the Facebook group. I doubt they're hired by so the I don't I, think, Yeah, I don't think so. I, I think it's hired by the city. Yeah, I, I, probably. But uh, they'll, they'll go like uh, this photography group. They'll go to like the Beer Cheese Festival and take pictures. And then they'll. What surprises me though is if the city has hired them, then they're paying all this money for these pictures and they're just putting them up on Facebook for free. I mean, they're putting every, if they take, uh, it seems like it at least anyway, if they're taking 250 pictures, well, they're putting 250 pictures up online. And they're not funny about, like, this person does not they're look. not editing it. No, they're not editing the pictures. Like, if you're standing there with your tongue out talking to somebody, they put it on there because that's the picture Could they be that they're just advertising their own business, but I mean, it seems like they would go through and edit them to make it look the best they could. Well, and, and why would you let, why would you give those away for free? I mean, because if I wanted to yeah, that's true. take I those pictures, you know. I could. You know. But if they're the, like the Pioneer Festival, the Beer Cheese Festival, they'll go to, um, they'll go out to the high school and they'll take um, pictures, professional pictures of the cheerleaders they'll post those on there they'll do the same thing for like the, the football team baseball team whatever so if you were a parent that um, it was uh, very difficult for you to afford professional pictures well, all you'd have to do would be to go to that Facebook page and, and just crop those and yeah, snip they don't them put and, or anything on them. no no, they don't put anything on them. So you could have them absolutely free. So that's what I'm saying. I don't know where they're getting their money from because they're giving all these away for free on Facebook. Um, but what I thought was cur what was what made me think. It gave me pause. It made me think, and it has before. They've gone out to elementary schools a couple of weeks ago. They went out to an elementary school in, in Clark County, and they uh, took pictures of all these. Um, there were teachers, parents, children, lots of children, and they put them on there for everybody to see. Well, the, it, it surprised me because you're taking pictures of somebody's kids and putting them online that maybe they don't want their kids' pictures online. But I know like at Ashley School, you have to sign at the very beginning of the year there's a consent form and some parents do not consent so when her school posts pictures on facebook they make sure the kids have got they, documentation they well they the, if the child that doesn't the parents right. don't want them in there they, they blur them, they blur them. And you cannot see the face at all. So the so the child did get their picture taken. So the picture exists, but as far as posting it online, that's good. They're blocked out completely. Yeah, yeah. that's to cover their butts. Yes, <laughs> and and yeah, and I understand that. So the one that the most recent set of pictures that made me think they went to a. Uh, middle school dance. There was a big middle school dance. Like Ashley, when Ashley was in middle school, and I think Andrew too, it was called the snowball dance. At least that was the one at Christmas. I don't know what the one this time of year was called, but the one at Christmas time was called the snowball dance. And we would always go to Dillard's or Macy's. Do you remember this? And we would help Ashley pick out a dress. And um, she, uh, she always looked so pretty. But um, I found out years later from Ashley that she felt so, uh, during that time, uh, during the, her middle school years, she told me, she said, I felt the most awkward, the most, um, like, sh like she was not um, comfortable in her own skin. Right. And she got picked on a little bit, which she never told me, which is probably for the best that she never told me, uh, because I would have been right up there at that school. 
Um, so it's a good thing she didn't tell me, but apparently there was some, uh, she did get picked on some and she did not feel comfortable in her own body. And she was, she felt awkward during those middle school years. So this photography studio went to this dance and they had kind of like a red carpet as you came through the front door. So everybody coming through that front door, it's like this was the entrance, and if you wanted to go in, it, right, you, had, to you had to, right, and so you got your picture taken. Every one of those pictures are on Facebook for everyone to see. Now, I'm not privy to the information about these pictures. Maybe they did sign a consent form. Maybe if you're okay with having your picture taken, you signed as you went in the door. I don't think so though, just because of how quick they got them on the, up there. You know, if you have 150 kids and they're all having to sign something, then how long is it gonna take you to match up the face oh, yeah. with the signature? I just don't think that's happening. And I think that they're just, they're taking these pictures and they're, they're going up online and nobody's asked at all. And I sent Ashley, um, uh, I screenshotted the Facebook pages, and I just sent her a message, and I said, just, I said, this makes me so thankful that social media was not a thing at all when I, when they were in school. When Andrew and Ashley were in school, social media was not a thing. Um, not until Ashley got in high school. I don't, I don't, yeah, Instagram and stuff. They had, um. I don't that, think they had Instagram. That Twitter and stuff like that kind of was starting when she was in high school. See, I don't remember that at no. all. At all. Um, I don't remember there being... Facebook was a thing then, too. Facebook might have been. I don't remember Twitter or Instagram or any of that being around when know. she was Instagram in high school. Instagram might have been in when she was in high school. It was right, right around that same time. Because I remember she was like, I don't know. She was young when she first got her first, her first flip phone, and that was from Kevin's parents for Christmas one year, because it wasn't a big deal for kids to have their own phone even. So you're talking about flip phones. You didn't have that stuff on a flip phone. No, you didn't have, um, but I just told her, I said, I'm so glad that social media was not a thing when you were growing up, because these pictures are being po po posted for anybody and everybody who who goes to this page to see. So if you feel shy or awkward, or if your parents- Or if um, you're already getting bullied, and then that's a way for them to bully you more. Yes, or if your parents didn't have enough money to buy you the nicest outfit or the <laughs> nicest clothes or- Sorry, we're like stars behind us. Oh yeah, well, but, <laughs> yeah, we're about to turn the corner, so it'll be better. <laughs> but you know, if if you um, if your parents didn't have the money to buy you that stuff, I don't know. I just think it would be a lot of pressure to have your picture on Facebook. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Oh, I agree. Especially, I know mean, I wouldn't have wanted it when I was in high school. Well, not so much in high school, more in middle school. That's when the, these kids are middle school yeah. kids. Yeah. Middle school, I would have. I was very. Uh, I was very bullied elementary and middle school, so. You were bullied? Oh yeah, and then in, in high school too. How so, were you bullied in middle school? Because I was, a, um, wore glasses, had a weird wonky eye, and, and uh, was a little skinny geeky guy. So yeah, but I met I met like four or five different criteria for bullying, so. When, I was always, when uh, did never you? Never physical bullying, it was always just words. How old were you before your eye got completely straightened out? It was still not completely straightened. I, I never um, noticed anything. It, um, I had a surgery in sixth grade. The last eye surgery I had was in sixth grade. Okay, and, and that so fixed that, most that fixed it. Yeah. Okay. So what, For the most part. So your middle school, our middle school was only seventh and eighth grade. Your middle school was seventh, sixth. Eighth, no, seventh, eighth, and ninth. Seventh, eighth, and ninth. Okay. So so you really didn't get bullied about your eye. No. After, at that point, it was just uh, being skinny and geeky and that kind of stuff right i i don't think i ever i never got had a, experience that at all that's good i never had um i never had anybody bullying me uh, now in high school i did have some people who did not like me um it did not help 
uh, that my dad was a police officer. That did not help things because um, at that time, what I didn't realize was that uh, he was going on calls at, to certain parts of town and guess what? Those students lived in those parts of town where he was having to, to go on these calls. And it just, I don't know, it was like, I, my, by me being the daughter, and then it made me a bad person, that, you know, and, you know, whatever. I, but I didn't, I, to, I still didn't get bullied. Slow down, get behind the road. There you go. I, I really never got bullied, but right. I did, I felt threatened. I felt threatened. Uh, yeah, I in never high felt school. that way. And I was just all make fun of. Yeah. Tell you names and stuff. Yeah. No, these. No, I had some people like threaten to beat me up. Yeah. <laughs> I, I never got any fights. But I, I got into one fight. Oh, I never got in a fight in my life. I, I was. I'm not a fighter for sure. No, I I'm not either. Do you go this way or yeah, straight? No, this way. Okay. So anyway, I just thought I would talk about that because I think social media, I think it must be very, very, very difficult with kids having social media and the need to feel accepted and to feel like you look the same as everybody else. And I think you're wear when you wear um, when you don't wear the best clothes and you you mm -hmm. don't have a lot of money to buy, wear wear really nice clothes and stuff and kids make fun of you. I think all that's more pronounced. Yeah, I think so too. A longtime viewer sent us a question. Kevin has no idea. He has I'm just here. No idea. Um, I, I'll, I'll go ahead. I don't think she'll mind me giving her name. It's Madison. Madison is a longtime viewer. She's been watching us for years. And she sent me, uh, she said, a <coughs> question for uh, this week's vlog. Okay, so here goes. I went on a long haul flight last night, 10 hours. Yeah. Awful. The flight was full. <laughs> no spare seats. There were a family of three extremely large individuals. No hate, just fact. The biggest of which sat behind me. The male behind me hardly had enough room to get into the seat and was half in the seat of the person next to me. It was a night flight, so everyone reclined their seat after dinner. I couldn't get comfortable the entire flight, and my partner kept telling me to recline my seat like the rest of the flight did. I said I couldn't because the guy behind me wouldn't be able to move. He said it's not my fault the mail was so large, and I also had a right to recline if I needed to. I couldn't do it because I felt bad. Am I an a-hole if I reclined my seat or in situations like that, is it right not to? Interested in yours and your viewers' thoughts. Well, I can tell you I've done the exact same thing you did. Um, had somebody kind of, you could tell that they were in there back. It was, he wasn't a big person, he was tall. So uh -huh. his legs were kind of, yeah, I, I would feel his knees in the back every once in a while. Not all the time, just occasionally, because you could tell he was shifting around trying to get comfortable. Because we've been on those eight and a half hour flights to London, and they're, they're a long flight. And so truly, you could swap out being uh, uh, morbidly obese for being tall yeah. in that situation because... It it affects it affects people the same yeah, way. If yeah. you're really tall and have no leg room, so so I felt bad and I did not recline. I, mm -hmm. I left my seat up the whole time, mm -hmm. and I, but I very rarely recline anyway because I do feel bad for the person behind me because I don't want to intrude on them and I can sleep upright. I mean it's not that big a deal, um, but I've had people in front of me recline, and um, but especially if you're not, we usually. We've been doing the Delta Plus or the whatever it's called. It's, I think it's called Delta Plus. Um, we've been doing that for a long, long or time. Or Comfort Plus. Whatever. Whatever Delta is like. It's not. It's kind of like business class, but you just get a little bit more room and a little bit more mm -hmm. leg room. Um, we've been doing that forever because we found that we did not like regular economy yeah. because it's way too close, way too tight, side to side and even front to back. So, um, so we've we've been in those economy seats before, though, and mm -hmm. when they lean back in front of you, man, they're they're like literally right in your face. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't tend to lean back anyway. You know what? But I don't I don't want 
my head to be in their space anyway. Right. It, well, it seems like you're leaning back further than you are. You're really not leaning back that far anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, but it does feel like they're intruding on your space. A bus is worse. A bus is worse. We, yes. If, if you've ever been on worse. a bus, we, you ever taken a bus trip, they really recline. Kevin's almost had a man's head in his life. I could have literally I mean, massaged his head while he was leaning back. <laughs> and, and he said, I'm sorry, this chair is broken, is what and he it said. Kept, it kept, he kept yeah, it kept and he said, I'm right. sorry, he said, I don't mean to go be doing this, but the seat's broken and I cannot sit upright. Mm -hmm. And I, he could have literally laid back and I could have, I could have massaged his head while he was sitting in front of me. That's how close he was. I, I'm going to give a, probably a controversial take on it. You don't have to, no one has to agree with me. Um, and it's okay because everybody's allowed to have their own opinion. And, uh, so here's mine. I don't think if you are, uh, it, for the seats that are in the, um, the back of the, the plane, the economy, I don't think they should even have a reclining option. I do not they're think. They're so that, tight. They're, it's the, the space is so tight. I do not think those seats. Or maybe one notch. I don't. just tilt you a little bit. I don't think I you mean, should ha even have the option to recline. I don't think you should get the option to recline until you have a little bit more room in between your seats. That's an option. Um, that's what I think. Now, that's not what the case is. The, the What the uh, reality is, is that all those seats recline. I personally never recline because I, I, I don't want anybody to do it to me. And so I think I try to treat others the way I want to be treated is how I see it. Right. I know it's because old school. Because I hate it when they do it in front of me. It's old school, but that's the fact. I don't want somebody doing it to me, so I don't do it to anybody yeah. else. But now, do I think you're an a-hole? For well, I don't think she's an a-hole because she didn't no, do it. No, she said, oh, am I, would I have been if I had have done it? Oh, I don't think you no, would have. Because, because that's not your problem. No, I don't. Who's behind you. Mm -hmm. They give you the option. It's just a personal choice for me. I just don't do it. Mm -hmm. But if you did do it, I don't think that's your problem. If no. you, um, First of all, I know some cases you can't help it because they shift seats around and stuff like that. If you're a bigger person or if you're a really tall person, you should try to get seats that are... Uh, more open like the well I don't know if I want a really really big person to move slow in the emergency lane in the emergency thing um, but but anyway um, they should probably get in a comfort plus it's not that much more mm -hmm. to get into those and they get so much more room they would be more comfortable I mean literally um, no oh you're saying you you you're saying you wouldn't want a big person in the emergency exit no, I wouldn't either no no because they're not going to be moving none too fast and moving in the emergency. and you know it's a really really <laughs> which is awful because I was a bigger person I wasn't really really big though right. I was taking up other seats but I've seen a video of I've seen a video I don't remember where I saw it because I don't click on a lot of videos but um, I saw a video where a super super morbidly obese person had a very difficult time just getting down, down the aisle and into yeah. their seat and i'm thinking if something happened on that plane where the people next to her had to get out or if she if something's happening and she got out in the middle of the aisle you'd have to climb over yeah, her you'd have because to climb she's, over. she's she's <laughs> she'd be laying be, on the floor <laughs> she, because she's gonna be stuck there yeah. and you know that's that's it's awful but it's just it's crazy. a horrible thought but that's the truth. And yeah. I, I do think that if you are, are a larger person or a really tall person, then you you have to think about things yeah. like that, whether you like it or not. And most tall people do try to get it like an emergency. Um, yes, because they're so uncomfortable. Yes, something. they're so very, very uncomfortable. I'm not, I'm only 5'10". Mm -hmm. And my knees have been in the economy class. My knees mm -hmm. have been in the seat. Um, in front of me before, right. especially when they lean back because your knees get right up in there. Right. Um, and it's worse, like I said, on a bus. Take the airplane experience and multiply it times 10 on a bus because it's 10 times worse on yeah. a bus. Um, well, speaking of this subject, go ahead. No, I was just going to say the bus that we were in uh, most recently when we were on that cruise and we stopped off at some of those islands and we took a bus. Those buses were even, it was like they had moved the seats even, even closer. closer. Yeah, they and, were ridiculous. And so, I mean, 
my knees were in the seat behind uh, yeah. in the seat behind me. They so were not designed for comfort. They were designed to get a bunch of people from one place yes. to the other. Yeah. Um, so. I saw a video. I don't even know if it's true or not. It might have been a joke, but I don't think so. I think it was real. They were trying to figure out how to get people the most legroom they could on an airplane, mm. but still fit enough people in there. So what they did was they tiered the seats. So the this seat would be on this level, and then this the one in front of them was on like a little stand, and the mm -hmm. seats were like up here. Like I would think that would help. Yeah, but your my face is in their butt. <laughs> Just don't pass gas. Oh, is it that tiered? Yeah, it's like this. The bottom oh. of that seat was like at my eye level. Oh, I didn't realize that. So so the stand for it was like. It gave me more room, <laughs> but if they passed gas, here you oh, go. <laughs> that's a little bit. Extra. It was yeah. So it was it was not no. If, if it was just a little tier, like it was a little bit, just raised you up to where you can get your legs under a little bit, that'd probably be okay. But they really had it raised up. Like mm -hmm. I said, it could have been a joke. Mm -hmm. But they were saying, oh, I don't think I'd want to be behind the people that were up that high. <laughs> right. And and I do, I'd say they try to do everything they can in the airlines to try to get as many people as they can as comfortable oh, as they can. But because yeah. you know they want to. They want a decent experience for you, but you know they can only do so much. Right, mm -hmm. uh, and and what the opinions that we just gave, of, especially like about the woman on getting on the airplane, that a lot of people like to. Um, I know there's uh, supposedly I don't have TikTok, but there's supposedly like TikTok videos about fat acceptance and fat shaming and all this stuff that's popular now. Um, what we are talking about. We're not fat shaming those people, but you you need to have self awareness. It's a reality of the situation. Yeah, it's just reality. It, it that if 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 you are six hundred pounds, then no, you're not going to be able to fit in that regular seat just like anybody else. That's that's the reality. That's not fat shaming. That's fact. And you know you need to have some self awareness to know that you don't need to be picking out that seat and, and other people are trying to get out in an emergency and think about how long it takes anyway when you're at the end of a flight and you're trying to get off and and you think gosh people are going so slow and you know you know it just you i think you have to have some self-awareness at that point and i feel like we can speak freely about that because we were obese people. Both of us were obese people. Oh, so we were never that big. We were no, no, no. We weren't. Uh, we were not that. That we were not super morbidly obese, right. but we were bigger people. So uh, you know, I I used to not be able to buy my clothes in the regular department. I had to go to the big girl clothes, and so I just feel like we can talk about it very candidly and very openly, um, and not get any flack in the comments. Um, but I do not think, Madison, that you would have been wrong for leaning mm -hmm. back. No. However, but I agree with you. I would have felt bad. Too. You are yeah. like yeah. us, yeah, because we don't. We know how that would fit. So I would. I would sit there uncomfortable too. I would have done the same yeah, thing. I've done that before. We've done it before. <laughs> um, and is uh, we uh, our seats got bumped on our what our second or. Second trip, I think, to uh, they the canceled UK. They canceled all our flights, basically. And our seats got bumped. We were supposed to be sitting for that long trek overseas. We were supposed to be in the business class. Uh, for plus or whatever. And we got bumped back. And so I thought, basically, that whole trip was very uncomfortable. Yeah. Claustrophobic. But, I mean, that's what you do. Um, but I don't think you would have been an a-hole. I just think you are a considerate person. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yeah, that's interesting, and it brings up other uh, subjects, too. There was a big to-do um, about some airline seats. A woman, uh, and I might not be telling it exactly right, but you'll get the gist of it. A woman got on an airplane, and she was supposed to be sitting in this seat. And there was a woman sitting in her seat, and... Uh, she She's said, not about the one we were on? No. Oh, no, no. Just something else. This okay. is in the news. Oh, okay. And she said, uh, she said, uh, the woman said, she said to her, oh, you're in my seat. And she said, oh, you want to sit here? And she said, well, uh, these are my kids. Would you mind switching me? And uh, the Which woman. we've done that before. The woman said, that's, uh, that's fine as long as, I think it was she wanted a window seat. She said, that's fine as long as your seat is a window seat because I specially got a ticket for a window seat. It was some scenario yeah, like that. I would do the same. I want a window too. And so the woman said, oh, well, mine's just right here. And it was a middle seat. Mm -hmm. And the woman said, no, 
I'm, I'm, no, I'm not going to. And she's like, but these are my kids and I want to sit with my kids. So maybe the two people back there will switch. <laughs> and, and the woman was like, no, well, they, she, um, the, the, the woman acted awful. The mother acted awful because this woman didn't want to switch seats. And I had been wanting to talk about that on the video too, because it's like, by the, that's your fault. That's your problem. That's not a me problem. That's a you problem. Because when you buy those tickets on Delta, I know it's not that way with other companies, but that's why we like Delta is you know, because that's one of the perks. You get to choose your seat. So if that's her problem. And this was that kind of a plane where she would have gotten to choose her seat. Well, then that's your problem for not getting... If the tickets weren't available for you to sit with your kids like you wanted to... Book another flight. Then book another flight. Don't get those tickets. Because somebody else shouldn't have to... No. Uh, be penalized or suffer because you didn't get the right seats. No. So, but I wondered, I was going to ask you, what would you do in that situation? Because you... I, listen, I would get... I would literally get mad at Kevin. If Kevin gave up his seat... And, and because for that reason, I would I would get mad. But you're such a nice person, I can imagine you doing that and saying, "Oh, I don't mind sitting back well, here." If I'm sitting, I don't like to be in the middle seat anyway. Period. Mm -hmm. um, I'd much rather be either on the window or the aisle. Um, but are you going to tell a mother no? Because oh, probably not. See, I, mean, I knew it. And I mean, I thought, it depends on how much I, I'm just oh, not. I get mad. I'm not a confrontational person anyway. I know. So. I don't know. It, it counts on how old the kids were, too. If the kids are freaking teenagers, it's like, Mama, they're not talking to you anyway. Oh, Get yeah. up. <laughs> okay, let's say they're, they're, but if they're younger, five and eight. Yeah, definitely. You Mom sits with them because I don't want to sit next to the five and eight-year-old anyway. Okay, so that's what you're thinking of. Yeah, I don't want to sit next to the little kids. But if they're teenagers, of course, they're going to be giving me uh, stink eye, side eye the whole time. And a jerk wouldn't be moving the mama. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, if they're older kids, who cares? They're not going to be talking to the mom anyway. But um, if they're younger kids, I don't want to be sitting next to them. So, okay. Yeah, mom can sit next You don't to want to have to be dealing no. with them. But we've done that before, too. Like, when me, you, and Ashley have been on a flight, or we, we got booked into a late we flight. We didn't ask. No, we didn't ask. And we didn't sit in automatically in somebody else's seat. No, no. We didn't We know. were, I think the case was, it was one in front of, we were like, you were right in front of me. Mm -hmm. And um, I was in my seat, you were in your seat, and uh, we were talking to each other. And I think the woman either next Said, to you or you next to mine. Together? Yeah. And so they switched. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being that her husband or whatever was, was the person. So we just switched places. And she was with the way person she wanted to be with. And I was with the person I wanted to be but with. But we didn't ask funny. and I wouldn't ask. I would no, never we were, ask. we would have just talked to each other right because just like that. Because we've had to sit apart before on oh, yeah. the way home or something like that. Yeah, I was back before. Yeah, and it's like that it is what it is. Mm -hmm. So, I had been wanting to discuss that on a plane, yeah. too, anyway. So, yeah. So, Madison, thank you for bringing up the subject. Everybody can feel free to leave their respectful comments below. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed the vlog this week. Thank you to everyone uh, for the support, the Patreon supporters, the YouTube members uh, for, for watching the video. We, we greatly, greatly appreciate it. And we will see you next week.